Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week as we are doing today, and then it is posted onto our website for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can get to all of our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows we have. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, um, similar to your state library. And so we provide services to all types of libraries across the state. So you will find um, topics on our show for all types of libraries. Uh, public, K-12, academic, corrections, museums, archives, anything and everything. Really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries, uh, something we think uh, resources and services we think might be of use to libraries, cool things other libraries are doing. We've been getting guest speakers to do that. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, um, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. So definitely should be able to find something for everyone, <laughs> library, who's interested in libraries. Um, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations for us, but we also bring in, bring in <laughs> guest speakers as we have this morning. Um, this morning with us, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, Blanca Ramirez Salazar, who is from the U.S. Census Bureau. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. And she is going to be talking about all the awesome data we can access now from the most recent uh, 2020 census. Now that it's gathered, available, I don't know. <laughs> but I will hand it over to you to let and tell us all about it. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I'll start off with just some uh, opening remarks and then uh, I'll go to the slide deck. So you may have to uh, help me figure out how to get back to my slide deck. Yep, I don't know no if problem. everybody can see that yet, okay? Um, well, good morning and thank you everyone for joining us. I did take it, so my name is Blanca Ramirez Salazar. I am a partnership specialist uh, for the 2020 census team uh, working still on the partnership component. Um, so I had the opportunity to work on the 2010 census covering Nebraska with the uh, Hispanic Latino community. And then for the 2020 census, um, I came back and then um, it was able to work Nebraska, South Dakota and North Dakota, um, as well as a little bit of uh, Texas early on on the border, border communities, about four counties there called the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and I oversaw partnership teams in your area. So data collection ended in, uh, for 2020 um, in, in October of last year, as you probably are all aware of that. Um, and then we released the apportionment um, results uh, April 26 of this year. So not too long ago. What we are getting ready to do is we're getting ready to release what's called the redistricting data. Um, and that will be available August, excuse me, August 16th. Um, what's called a legacy format. So we don't have the 2020 census, you know, all the all that data that you're looking for right now, you do have access to just ba basic like total population counts. And I can tell you that I know for Nebraska grew at a 7.4% um, rate since the last census and that matched um, that of the US. Of course, there were other states um, that also, you know, were a little bit, you know, higher and others, you know, lower in terms of their growth, growth rate. So whichever state you have joined us from, thank you for joining us, but you can find all of that great information online and then be looking for information with regards to what again is called that redistricting data. So that again will be available August 16th, the user friendly portion of it. Um, which will be on data.census.gov. One of the tools that I will be showing you um, is going to be available by September 30th. Okay, so, um, you know, it is not all out yet. What I will be talking about today, and you'll see this in one of my slides, is really what are some of those basic tools that are available for you right now um, that uh, will help you in your line of work? Um, it is just amazing. One of our missions, of course, is is to produce um, data, to publish data that is accessible and that is um, usable by local governments, 
by different nonprofits, faith-based organizations, by everyone. And that's what we, on our partnership side, have been doing um, for a while now. It's really, the slide deck that you'll see is really something that is available to anyone who would like to uh, kind of figure out what some of these basic doodle, data tools are and what the power of the data is. I will put a plug in for, it's a 2021 data summit series. So if you just Google that, you can get more you know, information about other data learning opportunities that um, our national office is providing. And then as a region, so I'm from the Denver, cover the Denver region and we have 12 states, we do have some regional ones. Um, so I can tell you that next week for our region is a very busy week because we have a data session, for example, tailored to the Middle Eastern North African population known as the MENA populations. We also have one that is um, tailored to the Hispanic business community. Uh, and then we also have, you know, the national has others like for emergency management, early childhood. And uh, there was a little glitch, some of you may be aware, a little glitch in regards to uh, anyone who had registered, let's say for, I think there was a couple of them. And one of those was the, data census data for librarians that's a national session so that had to get rescheduled and it is rescheduled for uh july 27th at 1 p.m central time um so i always encourage everyone you know you'll go through this session today but when you participate in others like the national one and perhaps a data dissemination specialist who is a, you know, on a permanent um, uh, basis with headquarters who covers your state. If you have them, you know, work with you and dig a little deeper, all of that will help in your journey to data learning and, you know, getting all of the information that you need to write your grants, to do your outreach. So I just wanted to put in a plug in for all of that. A lot of our great and fabulous, fantastic opportunities. And uh, we love working with the libraries. You have always been so key. And um, my opening remarks, I just want to end with a thank you before I get into my slide deck. Thank you for everything that you have always done to support uh, communities and getting our, you know, doing the best job we possibly can to get the count. Your spaces are safe. Your places are interesting and people love to go there. I'm a big fan of libraries. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we did a lot of pushing uh, here out of the commission to make sure libraries knew all the resources they had that they could use to help get people to, to do the census. Yeah. And we had our big partner signs up in the in our windows here at the commission. <laughs> Exactly. So, so thank you for everything. And, you know, the bookmobiles, I know uh, I worked with a team in three states, so I know bookmobiles were very helpful. We set up in areas where they were located. Um, you know, remember we went virtual because of the pandemic. So um, we went to places where the libraries were still providing services or the food banks or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, and the virtual part, uh, you know, as well as getting information uh, to anyone picking up materials from the library, all of that really helps. So it'll be exciting um, to see, you know, when the redistricting uh, data gets, you know, pushed out and is available to everyone so that, you um, you know, we can celebrate everyone's hard work as well as begin to use that data along with the other data that we have in ongoing surveys. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna get into right now. Um, and I know that we're gonna handle some questions afterwards. Mm -hmm. So please, you know, write those down or send them in and Krista will be paying attention for those. I can't see the questions mm -hmm. on my end. So uh, we'll just, uh, you know, work with those um, afterwards. And then you can always, you know, contact me or contact someone from the Census Bureau should you have any additional questions as well. Yeah, type in your questions when you think of them so you don't forget that near the end. <laughs> and we'll just keep, hold on to them and, and we'll be able to answer anything, all of them that you have. Great. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Now I've got to get to my slide deck, so bear with me here. Mm -hmm. Do I just hit escape or? Well, you should be able to just go onto it, um, like click on to wherever you've got the main, the full screen and it will advance. I see, the, I see. Do you see the the screen here? Yes, we're seeing the full screen of the accessing sensitive data, the awesome. first okay. screen. Great. First slide. <laughs> All right. Do you need me to do anything else before I begin as far as like turn off my webcam or anything? You good? No, no, go ahead. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, that's me. Okay. Yeah. 
And uh, all right, so again, as an overview, we're gonna talk a little bit about why census data, um, and then we're gonna pause in geography. This is really important because this is how we organize our data. Um, and then um, we'll go through the ACS, which is the American Community Survey, um, which provides all kinds of social and economic data. And then the tool, the three basic tools that I am going to get into are quick facts, that's on just regular census.gov, and then also um, the narrative profile. And uh, so there are also data profiles, but I want to just focus on the narrative profile, and that's and I'll show you where you can find that. Um, and then data.census.gov, which is the gold mine of data. So I think you're really going to like all of this, and hopefully will be useful to you in your work. Um, and by the way, I do have a copy of. Krista was uh, kind enough to share with me just an example of so the template for accreditation, and it says. Um, you know, just these different categories um, that you know when you're doing your research, um, you know, you know, down the road as far as um, uh, coming up with the data and information about the area you serve, um, I will show you some areas where you can locate some of that information. Great. Yeah, and I'll just explain just a short two sentences. Here in Nebraska, we do have public library accreditation is a process libraries can go through if they want to. And part of that is gathering demographic data about your area to figure out what kind of programs and services you could be offering. And we do direct people straight to the data.census.gov to find all that info. Thanks, Krista. And even if your library, you know, does not go through, is not, a, you know, accredited, uh, at the same time, there is an area that you are serving. So oh, yeah. the information that I, yeah, that I will be, will, will showing you, it will be helpful, I think, for everyone. So, okay, here we go. Um, so just a quick recap on why census data is important. I, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time here because this was a huge campaign for the decennial, so the 2020 census. Uh, but there are so many other things that the Census Bureau does. In fact, we carry out about 130 uh, surveys in any given year and at different intervals with different populations, different samples. Uh, of course, the decennial is always the one where we say we, you know, we're going to get our complete count. But the American Community Survey is very important, and that's one that I will be focusing on. Um, that one is also used to make determinations on funding for schools, hospitals, you know, libraries, uh, education, uh, uh, and all kinds of other services, emergency management. Yeah. Uh, and so the funding is critical. And we always know data equals dollars. Okay. So this is a slide that I mentioned I was going to pause um, in. And so I just want to make sure to let you know, this is how we organize our data. So anytime you want to generate some data, we have to think about what do I need it for? Do I need it for a county? Do I need it for my state? Do I need it for all counties in my state? Do I need it for places, which would be, for example, your cities or villages? Um, or do I need it for an area that is just smaller than a county, which we call census tracts, or for a block group? Um, and so this is how we organize it. So you can pull data on the entire country. You can pull data as we go you know, down um, for, by a region, and you can go across and say metropolitan, micropolitan areas, urban areas, um, AIAN areas, so your American Indian areas, by zip code. And then we get down to the state, and you can pull it for congressional districts, because of course the congressional districts are, you know, nested within your state. And then the school districts, and again, places is a term that the Census Bureau uses uh, instead of, for example, cities or villages. Um, so that is a term that you will look for uh, when um, you're searching in some of the tools. And then counties, and beneath those counties are census tracts. And census tracts are these subdivisions uh, that are based on population from like 1,200 to about 8,000 in population. There will be some census tracts that will cover, so one census tract might be an entire county. And again, that's based on population. There are also going to be some census tracts that go above that 8,000 maximum where we where we have for the the population the optimum is about 4000 so when you see census tracts especially for urban areas that go above that 8000 we have geography programs where our geographers will work with the local governments to decide whether you know they'd be interested in splitting up those census tracts and that happens over time um, and then we have other areas 
within the states that you can pull data from. So uh, Alaska Native Regional Area, State Legislative Districts. Um, so enough said about geography, but just know that this is how we organize our data. So let's talk a little bit more about the ACS, American Community Survey. Uh, this is something that some of you may recall was actually part of a decennial. So prior to the 2010 census, so in 2000 and prior to that, the decennial included either a short form or a long form. You know, now for the 2020 census, you always hear, and even for the 2010, it's very short, very quick. But this American Community Survey used to be part of the census in 2000. Then in 2005, because local governments and planners, many organizations wanted to have information a little bit more quickly than waiting every 10 years for it, the, the long form became the American Community Survey. And it is conducted every month, all of the time, and every community has an opportunity to be selected. So certain households that are selected randomly. And there are so many different types of questions that are asked in there and depending on you know how the household is going to respond to them and some are going to take a little bit longer than others um, i will do just a quick comparison here in one of the future slides here about the decennial and the acs but look at some of the the topics here or the areas that we cover veterans commuting education the number of children uh, you'll notice that there are some of these items that you can't get from the, the decennial at this point in time uh, because it, it was pulled away and it became something a little bit more regular and a sample so that you could have this information uh, on a more regular basis, more timely basis, rather than waiting every 10 years for it. Quick comparison here, ACS and the decennial, the, and I'll go across the bullet points. Um, so the ACS is conducted every month and year versus the decennial is conducted every 10 years. And the ACS, it is a sample of addresses. There is also, I will tell you, a it's an 18 page uh, document that gives you some really great information about the ACS. And it'll mm -hmm. let you know that it is a sample of about three and a half million um, addresses per year. We don't contact quote unquote individuals, it is addresses. We go based on our address list. Um, so this is on the US, DC and Puerto Rico. Um, and then the, of course, uh, for the decennial, we're counting every person living in the US, DC and the five US territories. Um, on the third bullet point, uh, we ask questions for the ACS about all kinds of topics uh, that are not on that decennial, again, like education, employment, and, and then, of course, transportation. Um, and then the decennial, of course, is much, much shorter. It took an average uh, of nine minutes for folks to complete um, their questionnaires. So we had that online telephone option and also the in-person um, and the hard copy. So those were the options. Then again, the average was about nine minutes and that ACS is gonna take a little bit longer uh, depending on uh, the responses uh, to the questions from those householders. So the ACS Finally, is done, is sent mm -hmm. through the mail to people? Uh, yes, actually they get an invitation through the mail, but they can complete it online. Oh, okay, cool. Because I remember when I did this the census this year, doing it on, because the last time I remember doing it in the, the paper, you had to mail in, and um, it was so quick. I was like, wait, was that really it? <laughs> it took like right? five minutes and I'm done. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yes, and we put all this effort into that, right? But we've got this other amazing data set that's called the ACS that yeah. takes longer. And, and so there is confusion that does exist because once we're done with the decennial, anybody who's getting an invitation for the ACS, many people say, well, we just got this done. Why are we doing this again? And so we encourage you, if you have any you know, patrons who come in or you know, residents of your communities who are asking you, you know, as librarians, why are we doing this? Or can you give me information about this? Um, mm -hmm. Please let them know that the Census Bureau does conduct over 130, inter uh, not interviews, but the surveys a year. And ACS is one of those and it's vital that they participate. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and then the last thing about the decennial is that it is 
that it, it's it's mandated by the constitution of course because of apportionment um so it does provide us that official count um and that official count is out now because we we released that april 26. just some quick features about the american community survey again it's three and a half million addresses per year and it does uh, uh inform or has an impact on decisions made for the federal spending um and then we have many topics over 40 topics and they're used uh, to support over 300 evidence-based federal government uses and to produce so many uh, billions of estimates each year there are three three things to remember here with the american community survey we get the one-year estimate so again this has been happening since 2005 so you're going to you can find data from 2005 for the acs one-year estimates are areas with population of 65,000 plus then you have these supplemental estimates for areas with populations of 20,000 plus but there are so many communities that are under that 20,000 so then you might ask well what do we do with those you would definitely that's why we have a star next to it go to those five-year estimates so that is what you want to pay attention to some of these communities that are under that 20,000 because then that information that you obtain it's it's a um it's over a 60-month period and it's helpful so those five-year estimates helpful for small population groups this slide right here and you all will get uh, this slide deck I think in the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours when I will share this with Krista um, sometime later on today and then she'll send you, I think, information with the recording. But I want you to know that this this slide right here, I have a printed copy and I like to keep that at my desktop because even though you see these categories of population and housing, so that's the content within that. So social demographic, economic and housing, those four terms alone, social, demographic, economic, and housing, and all those you know, subcategories under there, under each one, they, you will see them repeated in different tools. That's why I like to keep it handy at my desktop so that especially when I get into the data.census.gov, if I have a question about, oh, well, I'd like to get information for, let's say, Scott Bluff County, Nebraska, in regards to uh, language and so then that means i would be pulling information from the social characteristics if i'm more interested for example okay i've got a library let's say in uh torrington wyoming and i need to find out what the number of vehicles there so transportation are are the residents in the area i serve going to have difficulty reaching our you know our a library i might want to go ahead and check to see under housing characteristics the number of vehicles so there's one category there where it says no vehicle so that might be an indicator of okay how do we get if it, that's really high the percentage is high where so many folks just don't have vehicles well how do we get our services to the community so those are just some things to pay attention to and so i like to keep this at my desktop and i would encourage you to do the same and as far as the five-year estimates um this these are so again it's five years across 60 60 months these are characteristics over a specific period it's not a single point in time the decennial is a single point in time because we want to know where uh households lived or individuals lived most of the time on April 1st on census year. If for this, we're looking for a specific period of time and either for the one-year estimates, it's gonna be your one year. For the five-year estimates, we're looking at the 60 months and all you know the, the stats, they're weighted. So um, age, sex, race, and Hispanic origin. Um, and then of course, one reminder is that the five-year estimates are not an average of one-year estimates. So we just like to remind folks about that. Uh, in this third bullet point, I just wanna mention that the term vintages is something to keep in mind because you will see that on the tool that's called Quick Facts and in other tools. So it'll have just a little V like that stands for vintage. And if the year is, let's say 2019, V, it means that it covers the five years uh, prior to that. So it's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 
So that's going to be your five years, but it only will list it as 19 and then the letter V. Um, and then the dollar value estimates are inflation adjusted to the most recent year for that period. In terms of comparison, it's important to uh, just remember that when we, and when now we have, uh, for example, 2010 to 2014 and 2015 to 2019, that we can compare five year to five year time periods. Um, so uh, it's important to know that that is available to you. Um, and we only wanna compare the one year estimates to one year and five year estimates to five years. So apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Um, and then comparing across geographies and subpopulations is very easy to do. Um, and then always, uh, if you have, you know, the, they provide the totals, um, but also the percentages, means, medians, and rates, use the percentages, means, medians, and rates uh, versus the totals. That's always recommended as well. One thing that I will mention here is that margin of error. For anybody who sat through a st stats class, you know, math class where you talked about margin of error, margin of error is really how confident we are that the sample that we have collected data from is representative of the larger population. So the further and further away that we get, let's say the number is 100 and the margin of error is five in one example, then we're talking about 95 to 105 is our range of plus or minus five. But if our margin of error is 30 and we're then we're getting further and further away from let's say that 100 is my example. So then we're talking about 70 to 130. So we're getting further and further away, which means I'm just not as confident that that particular data is going to be representative of the larger uh, community. Mm -hmm. One key thing to remember here is, <clears throat> as I mentioned previously, the ACS is a sample, just like many of our surveys are samples. And when households so we provide let's say the invitation for households to participate they may ignore it um, and we have a number of attempts you know that we we try to collect this information from them because it is vital it's critical to get it so that you all have access to that data in aggregate form but many households may just not take it very seriously and they may just complete a few questions and not complete the entire thing right Mm -hmm. uh, so what happens there is then for certain pieces of data, that margin of error will go up and then other households will just not get it done. Um, and again, we try uh, uh, multiple times and in different ways, uh, different methods to, you know, encourage them to participate. So um, just uh, again, a, a word of caution on margin of error, but also know that what we do is try to make sure that you, you, you and you know local governments and everyone is going to have the best data you possibly can have. Um, so we try to you know make sure that that margin of error is as low as possible. Okay. Three data products that excuse me tools that I will be um, having us go through is quick facts, the narrative profiles. Uh, we do have data profiles that you can access from the American Community Survey, but I am going to go right into that data.census.gov um, and then uh, show you where that's located and work through a couple of examples. Uh, I'm going to work through just this, this slides so that I can just go live and not have to come back to the slide deck. So this is where quick facts you can access it just by going into census.gov. Of course, it's an easy to use application. It provides tables, maps, charts, um, and then um, just the, the frequently requested statistics uh, from many Census Bureau censuses, surveys, and programs. One thing to remember here is that Quick Facts is, produces information for cities and towns with a population of 5,000 or more. So if you're looking for data on, in Quick Facts on a community that is under the 5,000 and you try to enter it, it's not going to pop up. Um, there are other areas where you can look for that information. Um, the data that you're most for. of our communities in Nebraska are under yeah. 5,000. <laughs> yeah. So the yeah. one narrative profile, you're going to love that. And then also your data.census.gov because you can pull the five-year estimates for different areas. 
So um, I'll show you a couple examples here, okay? So the easiest place to access the quick fact is gonna be where you see the star there. So if you have a computer, you know, of course you have a computer next to you, but if you have, uh, if you wanna play around while, you know, with this, while I am going through this, you can click around as well. You can just click on this little icon that's access local data and it will take you to quick facts. But before we actually do that, this, I want to show you, this is what quick facts look like. Um, and this is actually a view that has um, the table and a map. Um, and I'll show you how to pull that up and the live demo. Um, then the second tool that I will show you will be in the American Community Survey area. And you see the little arrow there that it goes to data. When you click on that, it will give you all kinds of options. But we are going to go to the narrative profile. And this is what the narrative profile is going to look like. And it gives you these options to search by geography here, by nation, the state, the county, place. So a city, for example, or a village, um, census tract, and then these other uh, three areas. So American Indian areas, metropolitan, micropolitan, statistical areas, and zip code tabulations. And I'll, I'll work through an example on that. Uh, and then of course, we'll do the live demo, but before I, do that again. I just want to show you the data.census.gov is that gold mine of data. This is the third tool I'm going to show you. And we are actually going to use this uh, to, and we'll click on this advanced search instead of entering um, in the search box, we will just use the advanced search. So uh, this, uh, our goal is this tool, and we used to have American Fact Finder, so some of you may remember that information, so data from Fact Finder is still being migrated over, and you can find data in here as far back as 2000. Um, so, but not everything is available uh, for um, the different years, uh, but just know that you could um, go back and get a little bit historical information as well, okay? This slide is here because when I do a, an example and I go live, the steps that we're gonna go through is we're gonna click on the advanced search, then we're going to locate a geography. So we wanna tell the system, use the filter for geography. Am I looking for a county? Am I looking for a place? Am I looking for a census tract? Then the third step is gonna be to filter by the survey. And for the sake of this, this presentation, I'm going to just focus on the American Community Survey, five-year estimates, data profiles. There are some other options, but again, I will just focus on the data profiles uh, because that is where you are going to find uh, that one favorite slide that I have that uh, has all of the categories for the content, so social, demographic, economic, and housing, you're going to find those there. Um, and then we're going to click search and then see what it, what it gives us. And I also have prepared an example that I think uh, will be helpful um, to show you what the capability of uh, the searches are by state. There are many resources that I mentioned initially. And so when you receive the slide deck, you're gonna get the slide deck and it's gonna have all of these working links because I've already checked them, they should be working. And um, there's a Census Academy, so you can hone in on you know, certain uh, data skills and learn, continue to learn. There's a, a data gems and these little videos are awesome. Some of them are only two, two minutes. I haven't found one that's longer than six minutes long, but most of them are really quick and you know short and to the point. And uh, the ACS information guide, I mentioned that earlier, that that 18 page document, really great information, provides some historical info as well in regard to the ACS. And then uh, as far as some presentations that are available regarding ACS, uh, will be located in that final link. We know librarians love to know about citations because someone may ask you about this. How do you cite? information that has been extracted from one of the data tools. So there's just a, an example here. And so basically it's listing, it's US at the bottom, right? US Census Bureau. And then if you're using quick facts, it's quick facts. And then just copy and paste the, um, the link or um, you know, the, the, the address uh, for where you are. And you can do that for data.census.gov as well. Uh, and then be sure to make uh, to inform anyone who's asking about citation. It's really important to include the date that the data was uh, extracted, because again, 
we're updating. And so something that's available today, they has been extracted and included in a grants report, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, in two weeks, it might be something might be slightly different because we've updated. So that's not to say that the data, the data is very valid. I haven't really noticed a lot of um, changes, but there are definitely additions. Again, we're migrating data from that um, American Fact Finder. Okay. So that'd be very important for those of you here in Nebraska, anybody who's gonna be doing accreditation at any time in the future, this is what I'm in charge of, this is what I'm gonna wanna know. Where did you get the numbers you looked up and when? Because when you do it and when I check and see what you've done, they may be different and that's okay. I just need to know that you did it on a particular date and that's why I'm coming up with different numbers potentially. Awesome, thank you for mentioning that. Now I am going to go live here. Uh, at the very end, it's just a QA, and a so we'll handle that again after I go live. So bear with me here and Krista, please give me a yep. sign that you can see yep, this. You're okay. right there on the main this website. Yep, perfect. Okay, awesome. So um, I want to make sure that I just go through a few things here on our landing page. This is our landing page. And you can always go back to it by clicking on the logo that says US Census Bureau on the uh, top left hand corner. There's also a search box here where the, you can enter pretty much anything and you'll get uh, what you're a lot of times it'll be up at the top what you're looking for and I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about but that's a search feature you also have a menu here and I want to point out that we have our own library so I was kind of tinker tinkering around with this last night and I think you'll find it interesting as you go through it uh, to see what we have available. We have lots of publications, infographics, visualization, and we don't have time to go into all of that, but I wanted to point out that we do have that available. Uh, we also have a, a, before I get into the tools, I want to let you know we have a program that's called Statistics in the Schools. So for your libraries, okay, so how did I get there? All I did is I just entered Statistics in the Schools here, um, and then it gave me one of the top ones options and I clicked on it and basically this is what you get okay so this is actually was intended for the schools as supplemental lesson plans and information that teachers could use and they, they, they do use them um, there are so many um, great lessons here that libraries as you're working with um, with families, you know, with youth, with children, you know, providing some um, activities for them. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, there are just all kinds of resources available here. Um, you know, we have, for example, things on like Constitution Day uh, and then there's apportionment resources. And so it's just a great uh, tool for you to know that this exists and then it provides um, information by different age groups and by different um, um, subjects. So if we were to click on, let's say, geography, for example, you would get these different categories for grade levels, okay? So um, for example, if we click on that, a grades K through five, you have all of these different options as well. So just letting you know what is available and what we also inform the schools that we have available. And then of course it's up to them whether they wanna use it or not. But we do find that teachers really love this and we hope the libraries um, enjoy this as well and can use it as a resource. So that's that's the statistics in the schools. And then um, if we, if you're like me, I usually, I kind of stick to the top of you know my landing page and I forget to to browse down a little bit, but if you browse down, you're gonna see all kinds of great information. The help for survey participants, if you have anyone that comes to you and says, you know what, I received this, and of course librarians and libraries are trusted, so they may come to you and say, I received this invitation to participate in the survey, and let's say it's the American Community Survey or it's something else, um, and they don't know if it's legitimate, you can click on on this and you'll get a list of surveys. Um, you can always get a, encourage them to get a hold of somebody from the Census Bureau, you know, for, and there's information in this when you click on this help for survey participants, uh, who they could contact. So um, this, that's just great information for you to be aware of in case they come to you um, and ask questions about that. And as you keep scrolling down, um, you'll find all kinds of great news items. So we like to publish these America Count stories. 
um, we try to make sense and, and really publish uh, stories on how different organizations are using data. And then you keep going down popular visualizations, publications, and of course the COVID-19. Um, we've got a, a hub. So behind this, if I were to click on it, there are gonna be all kinds of resources there, um, but we're not gonna click on that today. And what I wanna show you is right down here on the bottom left corner, this subscribe uh, button. You, if you would like to receive information from the Census Bureau and get the latest news, and there's all kinds of options, you could just enter your email address right there, and then you can go ahead and tell the system how often you want uh, the information. Maybe it's once a week, maybe it's not daily, right? Uh, so, and, and the type of information that you would like to receive, it, they will send it to you. If it's too much, you can always unsubscribe as well. So enough said about this landing page. Um, I want to take us now to the first tool, and this is this quick facts right here. So how did we get there again? All I did was click on this access local data, and it took me right to it, okay? All right, so that's that. There we go. And your default is always going to be the US. You can actually delete it once we enter uh, some geographies as well. You have a, a total of six geographies that you can include in Quick Facts. And Quick Facts, again, as a reminder, um, the, again, this is in your slide deck, it provides statistics for all states and counties, all states and counties, and for cities and towns with a population of 5,000 or more. So, um, if I want to select the state, let's say I'm just going to select Nebraska, and it just pops up right here. Um, again, if I wanted to uh, delete one of the geographies, I click on the little X right here, and it's gone, okay? I have already prepared in advance an ex uh, well, let's see here. I started to prepare an example, which this is it. I still have the US on here. I left Nebraska. Uh, Lincoln is the you know second largest city in Nebraska, and then um, I wanted to select a couple other communities. So South Sioux City in Northeast Nebraska, Schuyler, um, uh, that one is kind of a smaller community as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna go to Scotts Bluff, or I could go to another one, uh, but for the sake of going way west, oh, it's actually together. City here okay and it just pops up right here I, this is not intended this this whole presentation when I'm going live here is not intention for us to analyze the information although we can make some observations but we don't have time to analyze I want to just show you what some of the the tools are that you can use and what you could do with it and so that's how you add the geographies now if I to scroll down a bit, oh, let's see here. If I scroll down, all the way down, you'll see all these categories right here, um, race and Hispanic origin, population characteristics, housing, families and living arrangements, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you can just keep going and you see all that great information. But if you want to avoid having to scroll down, you know exactly what you're looking for, then you can just click on a topic. And let's just uh, pretend like we want information on computer and internet use for these particular geographies. And so then it isolates that particular area, okay, the, the, the topic there. So how do you get go back to the original table? We just click on all topics. Another great feature um, is the facts. So if I want to, again, in bold are going to be your topics. So age and sex, population, race and Hispanic origin. If I want to find out what is, uh, let's see here, the Hispanic or Latino population in these areas, that's a fact. I just will go ahead and click on it. And then it just bumps it up to the very top. It highlights it. So that way you don't have to scroll down and try to search for it, right? And you still see it highlighted there as well, okay? Now, there is an FAQ uh, right here on the top right-hand corner. It says FAQ. When you click on that, 
there'll be all kinds of questions there and responses. So for example, you might be wondering, well, what are these little eyes right here on the left of each of the facts? What are these little eyes and what, you know, what, what will they tell me? You would just, then you could go to FAQ and it would tell you what they are. But basically, this is where you get sources, you get more definitions and more information about that particular topic. So it will give you just this great rich information so you can understand just a little bit better in terms of uh, what that actually means. And so for example, here um, I want to, and again, uh, this was not necessarily intended for us to analyze, but just quickly, I can mm -hmm. see that my population percent changed from April 1, 2010 to July 1st, 2019, and you see that B2019, that means that um, that's the vintage 2019, okay? And so 11.7% um, percent change in the city of Lincoln versus, oh wow, South Sioux City, it's a negative, so 4.2%. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what, you see the X's right below uh, here where I've got this highlighted, that is a placeholder for the 2020 census information. We have released a Nebraska, that's why it's there. But you see how we have the access there? We're waiting for that to be released and then it'll get dumped in here. Um, and so, wow, so South Sioux City is a negative 4.2% of decrease in population. And then the uh, same thing with Scott's Bluff, but look at Skyler is, uh, is a po on the positive side there. So that's how you can use that. Now I am going to, just note that again, I have still maintained my selection of this facts, Hispanic or Latino percent, but you can do that with any any of them. So up here at the top, I could clear my categories if I wanted to start all over and pick some other geographies. Um, I have the table up right now. I could find a map, but I want to look at the chart. I'll show you the map in the dashboard, but the chart, when I click on that, I'll be forced to select a geography. Let's just say I want to pick Skylar. Okay. And here, uh, what I, I'm looking at again, it what it's given me is a Hispanic or Latino percent. And it's given this to me in a chart that I can scroll and compare to other areas. Okay, so this is by city. So it automatically highlights the ones that um, I had pre-selected. So that's how you could use that. And you can see Skylar has uh, over 72%. You can click on the bar and it's 73.2% um, Hispanic or Latino percent. And you know, you can just you know keep scrolling down and then you see Lexington, for example, is quite high too, 59.6%, so on and so forth. I want to get the three table map and chart in one page then I click on dashboard and let's just say that uh, I'll just uh, select Scott's Bluff this time and again this is focusing on the Hispanic Latino community because I have already selected that as a fact but I can get rid of that and just do a general one um, so we see the dashboard here and then you get the three components so this is very handy whenever you are, I think, um, uh, looking at comparing different areas or looking at different facts. Um, but there are also some, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, it is It is really a cool tool. And it's great for librarians to be aware of, because although you may not be the one who's, you know, pulling all of this, you may have a patron or somebody from your city or your community that says, you know, I'd love to do this. And then you're going to know, oh, quick facts, you know, that would be a great place to visit. Uh, so you're a resource. Um, you can always print this. You can uh, export it to a CSV file. You can email it to someone. If you would like to embed this onto your website, you can do that. You can share it via social media mm -hmm. as well. Okay. I'm going to move on um, to the next category, the next tool, and that is the narrative profile. So we've already talked about quick facts, and I know there's we could talk another hour about each one of these tools, but for the interest of time, I want to make sure that uh, we go through an example here. So how did I get here? I just went to surveys and programs. There are many ways to get to the different tools, but this is an easy one. American Community Survey, 
because we're focusing on American Community Survey. We're going to click on data here. And there, there are still slides on your slide deck, and so you'll know exactly how to get here uh, once you get that. And you, you see what I was talking about with that one, my favorite slide um, that says social demographic, economic, and housing. If mm -hmm. we were going to want the system, basically this area, to take us to the one of these tables, we could actually click on that. But I wanted to show you what the narrative profile can do for for you so the data.census.gov is is where i'm going to depict uh, where the social demographic economic and housing characteristics are located um, so here is i clicked on narrative profile and these are the options that you have it is again 2015 to 2019 acs five-year narrative profile and you can get this information as early as 2014 but this is the most current one as the five year. So let's just say I actually want to, uh, I could do this with a place, I could do it with a census tract. And remember, the census tracts are these subdivisions within a county. I'm going to do it with a census tract because I want to let you know an additional tool that is available called GeoCoder. And that I think is very helpful if you want to get information on a smaller area than a county and census tracts are nested under counties not under places or not under under cities so i want to show you how to um find a sense of uh, an area so let's just say i want to find out uh what uh the o'neill public library in nebraska uh what is its demographics, you know, I want to find a little bit more information about that. And I already did a little bit of work in advance to get us moving faster. Um, so I have an address and I don't know what address it is, but before, see if I click here, I have to tell it what state I'm in. So Nebraska, and I think it's Holt County, if I'm not mistaken. David, you know, let's see here. O'Neill, yes, for O'Neill, yeah. It, Sorry, you were asking for O'Neill. Yes, it yeah. Holt. Yeah. Is it Holt? Oh, yes. Okay. So Holt County. So you have to tell it other oh, system what county you're in, and then look at what happens. I, I just wanted to you to see this. It's not intuitive to know like which census tract you need to select. So we need to figure that out. I want to find out what the surrounding area of the O'Neill Public Library looks like. So what am I going to do? I am going to go to a tool that's called GeoCoder. I'm going to leave this open and I'm going to come back to it. But let's just say I go to my landing page and I go to GeoCoder and you're going to get, so through Krista, you're going to get the instructions on how to access this. So should be pretty easy if uh, you need to use this tool. Okay, and you see how it says census GeoCoder? Well, I click on that. And then it takes me to the actual tool. And I will plug in the address for O'Neill Library, which is 601 East Douglas Street. And then O'Neill, and then you have to enter the state and the zip code. Okay, so we're going to pretend like I've already done this because I have. And what it does is it shoots this out right here, right? So it may not make a lot of sense, but what we're looking for is the number of the census tract. So mm -hmm. you can just do a control F and census tract, that's a census block. So I can just go tract right here. It's going to be the 9743. So now I know I'm looking for 9743. So I'm gonna go back to my narrative profile. And I know now it's 9743. That is where the O'Neill Public Library is located. And I'm gonna click get my narrative profile. Okay. This is Do those this census is, tract mm -hmm. numbers ever change or get moved around or uh, they can split, especially for urban areas. Okay. Um, like if yeah. someone if like if, if O'Neill had looked us up previously and knew, oh yes, our tract number is this, like a couple of years yes. ago still that or maybe they always have to double check. no 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 and like i said one one census tract could be an entire county just because of the mm -hmm. size of the population right, right. But you do see that in urban areas 
you will, after time, because uh, the population grows and the different census tracts, then they sure. split. But then there we have these crosswalks that'll tell the users, okay, it used to be this, and now it's two of them. Instead of the one, it's two. But you won't really find that happening in the, in the rural areas. Um, so see this right here? I am going to just scroll down real quick and you see all this great information right here, we have done a lot of work for you, which is awesome. And so I don't, again, I don't want us to spend time just analyzing this, but I want you to see what, when you click around on these different areas, what you see, um, we, we have it all open, but if we close it all, then we see the categories here and we've collapsed them. So if you want, if we want to find out Oh, well, I'm curious about, for example, the population. Let's look at the population for this particular census tract where this library is located. I could just click on that and then you get some narrative and you get a chart about that. Uh, this actually might be helpful for, again, grant writing or for um, your accreditation, uh, perhaps. Yeah. And then you, you can click on this, anything where you see where it's a view data in a table format, you get it in a different view. Okay, so you see that? And this is, again, the five-year estimates right here. So, all right, so you can change your geography and you just click on that and it'll take you back where you can change it. Um, again, you can click on any of these or you can open it all and get a little bit more information about um, the census tract or the place or the county, whatever you've selected as your geography, um, you can get that information through narrative profile. What do you think, Krista? I think it's very awesome, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, and the, the, the most awesome thing here is that you can copy and paste it. If you do have a snipping tool um, mm -hmm. on your computer, you can, snip an area and just mm -hmm. put, just copy it right onto a report. That's what I was saying. Yeah, this this yeah. narrative here, this is a lot of the exact things that we're looking for. We have our libraries as part of their accreditation do what we call a community needs response plan. And this is exactly the kind of data we're looking for that you would use to decide what how you're going to respond to your community needs, what what what's the demographics. And a lot of this wording you would be perfectly fine to just copy and paste right into your document, cite it, like I mentioned earlier, but that's where you got it from. Mm -hmm. um, but this is exactly what we're looking for, that you've looked up these numbers and you know what's going on in your area. Yes, yes. Um, well, I think for Krista. grants, too, lots of grants. We have a lot of libraries looking for applying for grants now, um, especially over the past year, they need funding again for things. Um, and this is what a lot of grant um, issuing agencies, um, IMLS, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, other organizations that may be giving out grants, they want to know why is this something important to your community? These are the numbers and nicely written up already for you to just paste into those um, applications you may be submitting. Exactly, exactly. Um, so that is that second tool I wanted to show you. I do see that it is uh, it is uh, the top of the hour here. If um, I could get about 10 minutes. Um, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll tell everybody, um, even though, yeah, we do, you know, officially we make our show an hour long, but we go as long as it takes for to get through everything we need to. And if anybody has any questions, we'll make sure we answer all your questions. So get your questions typed in. If there's anything you were wondering about the Sensa, anything specific you wanted to see, or something you're confused about how to find or look up, or um, something, you know, we can answer some questions at the end. Um, get them typed in, and we'll go as long as it takes. If you all have to take off because you're, you know, you only allotted an hour for this in your schedule. That's okay. We are recording the show and you can watch the whole thing at, um, whenever you have a chance later. Thanks, Krista. Okay, so this is the goldmine of data. And this is data.census.gov. And how do we get there? You just enter here uh, in the browser data.census.gov and it takes you to this page right here. What I want to show you is, and we are gonna click on the advanced search. There are different ways um, to pull data, but we will click advanced search because I don't know the number of the table or the map that I'm looking for. Um, mm -hmm. That would be your data gurus or data geeks, however they like to call themselves. Um, so that's what we will Thank do. You. And I do have a couple of examples um, already prepared for you. So 
before I get into that just quickly, and I know uh, how you love resources and this FAQ, I just want to take you there down at the bottom right corner, frequently asked questions, this how to material, how to use data.census.gov. If you click on that, you're going to get all kinds of resources here and great examples. So if you're wondering, well, how do I do an advanced search? How do I copy cells and headers, um, customize a table, download um, the tips and tricks I recommend? I think that's really helpful. In fact, they use a Nebraska example there. Um, and then mapping. So there's just some great resources here for you. And then additional resources below, flyers, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Oh, and there's that geocoder. Uh, the tool that I showed you, but uh, I'll send you the instructions, um, even though I just showed you where they are. All right, so let's back up and we're going to go to the top here, right? And I will show you what I'm going to end up with. I want to end up with something like, uh, let's see if it pops up, this, okay? I'm looking at the entire state, but you can look for certain counties or you can look for um, you know, uh, places and data, pull data for different areas. So the examples, uh, for example, this first one that I'm going to go through, it, it, the still slides that you will receive, it will have um, arrows showing you exactly the steps that I'm taking. So I clicked on advanced search. Remember, that's one of the, I think the four steps that we'll be taking. This is like we're shopping. We're at the store and we're going through the different aisles. So topics, geography, years, surveys, codes are our aisles. And so we need to decide what do we want to start with? We always will have to select a geography. So I, I like to start there. Um, but for topics, you can select any one of these if you're looking for information on race and ethnicity, housing. And you, as soon as you click on any one of them, and they don't have a little box next to them, it means that you'll get more options. If I click on housing right here, for example, that's the end of the road, okay? So just showing you um, what some of those um, items mean. Geography, there's your nation, the region, a division, state, county, tract. So look for tract, not census tract, it's tract, block group block, and then there's all kinds of other options, but your place, if you're looking for um, a city or a village, you know, that would be the term you're looking for, place. And then you'll get asked, well, what state are we talking about? You'll have to tell it what state. And then when you, let's say we're clicking on Alabama here, because it's the first one that's there. Um, and then I want all places in Alabama, or I just want to select certain ones. Okay, so you can do that. Um, so let's just move on to the third filter. You can select the year of information or data that you want. You can also focus on the surveys. And for the sake of this exercise, we're going to focus on the American Community Survey. But this is where you will find the decennial census information, the 2020. It will, this is a user-friendly portal. By September 30th, you're going to see some data in here for 2020 census. Okay. And then for anyone who's uh, doing research on businesses, you know, who's business-minded, they're going to really want to use this code. So it has an uh, North American industry, industry classification um, survey codes. And so this is where they want to go to. So what are we going to do and how am I going to get to the example that I just showed you a few minutes ago? I am going to first go to my geography. So I need to select, I want all counties in Nebraska. So that's what I'm going to do. So I click on county and then I want, I have to tell it what state I'm in. So Nebraska. I could select another another state if you'd like me to, Krista. No, Nebraska's uh, fine. <laughs> Nebraska's fine. Okay. And then all counties in Nebraska. And you see on the bottom left corner the little green button? That just mm -hmm. means that I selected it. It's the end of the road, right? Yeah. And it's captured it. Then the next thing is, the next step is I want to tell it what sur survey. In this case, I want the American Community Survey. Already, because I've selected that particular geography, it has grayed out certain areas mm -hmm. and it gives me these options. So it's it's eliminating, it's weeding out what it can't give us. So I'm going to select American Community Survey because I know that's what I want. And I'm going to select the five-year estimates. You have some other options, but I'll do five-year estimates. And you see how you have multiple options here? 
I want us to focus on data profiles. Why? Because you will see, okay, so you see how I have the button there as well, and I'm going to click search. You're going to see these four tables. So this looks familiar, the terms demographic, social characteristics, economic characteristics, and housing characteristics. It's basically that one table, the blue table that says ACS content, okay? I could view all tables, which, or I could just go straight to maps. There's so many different things that you can do just by being here. There's also maps down here below and uh, an area that's called pages. I'm just gonna view them all, it's four of them. Sometimes you're gonna get 700 or 1,000. Okay, that means that you need to kind of filter or figure out exactly what you what you want so that you don't get so many options. It seems a little overwhelming. So for this exercise, I want to um, find, so in fact, I want to actually go to demographic and uh, housing characteristics, okay? We're gonna go here which is where we are, and you'll see that it is, uh, is green or gray. And so that you can actually click on these different categories and, until you get to what you're looking for. You can scroll down. You see, you can scroll down and you get all of this rich data. And then you can scroll across and you see how we start with Adams County, so it's an alphabetical order. And you can keep scrolling. It'll have all the, all the counties um, for Nebraska here, okay? And so let's just say that um, I want to select, I have to get down to the Hispanic origin because that's basically what the map I'm gonna pull. And so we gotta keep going. So there's Hispanic or Latino and race, okay? And I'm going to select uh, right here. And I, I can even skip this and go right to maps, but I just wanna make sure that it's there. And then it takes me to the map right there. And it that should actually be the same. Whoops, bear with me here. Well, the, okay, so why doesn't it look the same, right? You're wondering, this is, I went through the same process previously. It is because up here where it says sex and age, total population, it automatically takes you to like to the first one. So mm. you have to click on this little little drop down arrow and you actually have to find um the category it's the one that i had put a little blue square around and you have to find it so just scroll unfortunately uh, uh, right now there's a little glitch where you can't just type it in you have to actually look for it so it's there's race and it's in order of how it's listed on the table so i know that the hispanic um, origin follows race, so there it is, okay? So I am going to select Hispanic or Latino, uh, let's see here, total um, Hispanic or Latino of any race, and I want the percent, because you have the option to do estimate. Um, so there's that, and you have some other options as well. So that actually matches this. That's the one that I had created previously prior to coming on, online. Mm -hmm. So what is this? Yeah. So what does this tell us? If you look at the legend down at the bottom left, you can tell that the darkest uh, counties are the ones that have um, the largest percentage. Okay. So up to 45.4% of mm -hmm. Hispanic or uh, mm -hmm. Latino. Okay. Of any race. And then um, you have other counties that show up from 0% to 3.9%. So pretty low. So which ones are they, right? So there you've got Dakota County, and then you've got, uh, I think that's Colfax, et cetera, et cetera. And mm -hmm. I'm just kind of clicking around, right? But you can take the table, uh, and if I were to go back to the table, click on the top left corner, you have the four options, all tables, maps, and pages. And what can I do? I can click on the right-hand corner and go to customize table, and you see this table right here, if I, because I have all the counties here, and let's just say um, at this point, I really don't want to look at margin of error because that will reduce the space for my table. I can export this and you can, yeah, it's really, it's really handy. Um, so you can download this 
uh, to a CSV file, okay? Now we're not gonna do that, but just know that you have that option to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can transpose and do all kinds of uh, wonderful things with this information. But I'm gonna go back to my table. And when you're uh, clicking back and forth, it will take you back to the original, you know, sex and age was a very first um, field. So you have to keep, you know, look for it. Although um, I already had it pulled up over here, okay? So just know that that's available. If you're interested in, so thinking about this example, if you're interested in getting information <clears throat> about, let's say the number of vehicles, so you're thinking maybe transportation might be uh, perhaps an issue in an area, um, that would be the housing. Let's just see if we can quickly do that. Housing characteristics. And now it's, uh, I'll actually go back to the table here. So housing characteristics, and we're gonna look for something that says vehicles. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's housing occupancy, units and structure, the year the structure was built, uh, the number of rooms, bedrooms, you see this, all this awesome information, uh, the housing tenure. In fact, housing tenure is something that for all of this uh, rental assistance mm -hmm. funds that are available, something that that renter occupies so the percentage can be used for that um, and promoting in those areas. Uh, let's see here, vehicles available. You see this, no vehicles available. And mm -hmm. again, I pulled up all counties. So I'm just gonna well, mm -hmm. basically look for that. And I, I wanted you to see where it is in the table, but really I could have just gone straight to the map and I have to look for it. I have to go for, um, bear with me here. It's kind of towards the bottom. Units and structure, rooms, we went past that, bedrooms, housing tenure. Uh, let's see here, vehicles available. All right, no vehicles available and I want to select the percent, okay. So what does this tell me? The top percent, so the range is, okay, so 1% to 9.2%, right? I'm not too concerned about these counties that are very light, but I am definitely concerned if I have, um, to, if I have a service I wanna provide and I want families to come to, to um, perhaps the library, right? Or it could be a business. It might be a bit of a challenge for the counties, uh, some of these rural counties. That one is Sioux County is 6.3%. Um, we've got Thurston County is an 8%. So, you know, I don't know which one is the top one without actually exporting or going back to the table, but mm -hmm. that 9.2%, yeah, 9.2% yeah, is, is, is mm -hmm. the top one. Mm -hmm. So this is how, mm -hmm you can um, extract data, you can use your snipping tool, and the, the examples that I have, in fact, this one I'm gonna recreate because I had not included in the slide deck. Um, I think this one is interesting for librarians um, as a tool, so I'll make sure that this one is part of the slide deck. Um, so anyhow, this is what is available there. That's, okay, look at Pawnee County is the one that is at 9.2%. Mm. So if you have, I know that, uh, I don't know about all the states, but I do know Nebraska um, has several regions, library regions. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, we have our regional library systems uh -huh. that okay. um, do consulting and, and help to training and with our libraries in those four areas. Okay, and those four areas, um, are they, they have the, is there counties? Is that how they're divided yeah, up? Yeah, there's multiple counties? counties in each one, yeah. Um, okay. There's the, in, there's the um, Western Nebraska Panhandle area, that's what we call it, mm -hmm. over on the west there. Central mm -hmm. Plains, pretty much straight, all the middle counties. And then the right hand side of the state is broken up into Southeast and Three Rivers, which is pretty much that section, that area over there, top okay. and bottom. And as you can see, it's it's because as you, there's more counties in the Eastern part because there's higher population over there. So that gets, so that those uh, two systems have, um, they have more libraries to cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of okay. that stuff in the middle of the state is ranch land and not a lot of people living there. That's why the statistics are probably very low. There's few communities and just lots of open spaces of all the, where the farms or the cattle are. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, well, just know that, let's say for a regional plan, for example, you can tell the system that you just want it to be certain counties. So you nice. so in your filters, okay. back in your filters, you just click on that and go to your geography. And instead of all counties in Nebraska, you would just go down the list here and select the counties that are part mm -hmm. of that region. Uh, so for smaller areas, right? So for, let's say uh, the O'Neill Library, for example, I don't know how far um, it, it reaches, um, but they could go in and just select um, the place and get information on uh, the city of O'Neill, for example. Mm -hmm. Right, right there. And it depends. Yeah, some of our some of our libraries they just serve their city, but some it does expand out because the nearest city is so far away. Mm -hmm. They handle their county or officially or unofficially sometimes, or just mm -hmm. whatever the area is around them, and it may cover multiple counties depending on where they sit. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So the, there are different uh, criteria or different variables that uh, might be interesting to look at. Um, I, I actually um, had gone through the uh, accreditation template and I know that, um, you know, because we went from American Fact Finder to um, data.census.gov, that yes. the areas that you'd want to uh, focus on would be like demographic and housing estimates, sex and age, for example. Um, and so basically, again, it's going to be these four tables where you're going to find the answers to uh, the questions that you have um, for different areas. Again, yeah, it, oh, well, that was a little bit different. It's because I took off my geography. <laughs> um, so, and then also your social characteristics. So your school enrollment is going to be in social characteristics as well as your educational attainment. Um, and then uh, the language spoken at home. Um, that one is under social characteristics. And then the work life portion of it, which is um, the, you know, uh, it's called employment status. So there's an area that's under employment status, economic characteristics, all parents and family in the labor force, uh, for example, what percentage. Um, so that is uh, the, the tables um, that I mentioned previously, the social characteristics. And again, it's I'll just uh, places an hour. This is places. So uh, yeah, so we had uh, the reason you started to see that change. You see it's social characteristics, economic housing. Those are your basic ones. And that's where you're going to find um, the information. Be happy to answer any questions that anyone has at this time. Yeah, let's see. Does anybody have any questions? Nobody typed in anything while you were talking. Okay. Um, I'm sure, you know, getting a lot of info here. <laughs> um, but this yeah. is great. So if anybody has any questions, go ahead and type them in. Um, we can answer them now. Uh, we'll go until you get all your questions, answers, if you do have any. I know we do have a few people that did have to take off right at the at sure. 11, and that's fine. We are recording. Huh? Um, but this is great, Valga. I mean, this all the detail and learning about all the new ways everything is arranged. Um, like I said, you know, we use this here for our libraries to learn about. And so I get kind of involved in it and I'm kind of a, a geek about it, I suppose. <laughs> I'm able to find where all the things are and, and where the numbers are and how they compare and everything. I just find it very, very interesting. And um, for years, you know, we've been using the same, the way of finding everything. And of course, a little nervous with everything changing to the data.census.gov page. because. Okay, can we still find yeah. what we need to and and but um I think it's very slick. I do love the look and the setup and um mm. just with anything statistics like you're talking about, it's gonna take some time and clicking and digging down into the right section you need. Um mm -hmm. but um it's all there, yeah. Yes. And one of the things that I will do is uh just let you know where should anybody have any questions you know if you can't reach me there is a data dissemination specialist assigned to every state there's also a mm -hmm. portal or an area that anyone can just send in a question to um, and then if you want a presentation you know some just a little bit more digging you can make that request and then somebody will get back to to your library um, in regards to that request so a lot of resources out there. Um, I will tell you that I, I have done a little bit of uh, research in my past life 
and then uh, getting familiar with the data.census.gov and just really to know what is available at the basic, the basic level. Mm -hmm. There are many, many tools. So the ones that I showed you today are ones that we believe are very, they're all valuable, but they're the, your basic ones. And the data.census.gov, mm -hmm. the last one I showed, that one is again where that 2020 census information is going to be available and so you're you're going to want you know to know where to go and that's basically like your shopping right so you got your filters there and um you also have the faq so you can um you know uh participate in your self-learning and you know dig oh, up yeah. the, the academy yeah, yeah the academy um the data gems and um uh, you know watch those um in case you're interested in learning something a little bit different okay mm -hmm. we're all here to support and in libraries we love you so uh <laughs> let's continue to work together all right awesome thanks well it doesn't look like anybody had any desperate questions they wanted to ask you right now that's fine um as as blanca said she will, we will have these slides it has her contact info on there too i believe they did <laughs> um yeah. if you do have any questions or need anything um, I am going to pull presenter control over to my screen now uh, to wrap things up here. There we go. So uh, thank you everybody for being with us this morning. Thank you, Blanca, for all this great census information. I know we could have sat here for hours and hours talking about it because there's just so much in there, but <laughs> we have to stop at some point. But um, she did mention those uh, the data summit series and I just did exactly what you said over here. I just typed in and I left it here so you could see 2021 data summit series and there it is um you can just go there and they've got the previous ones here upcoming ones everything you want so if you're looking for more training and then all the help things that were on that sent the on the census stack of page of course they've got help they've got the faqs everything that she was showing it's all right there really easy to um learn so um we have recorded the show today as we do every week uh when it is available and ready a i will um email um everyone who attended today and everyone who registered for today's show uh, should be by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest as long as go to webinar and youtube cooperate with me <laughs> um, i will let everyone know when it's available but i will show you here this is our encompass live website this is also something you can just uh, use your search engine of choice to search for encompass live the name of the show and we are the only thing called that on the internet so far Nobody else is allowed to use that name and you'll come up with our pages. Um, here are upcoming shows, but then right at the bottom underneath there is a link to the archived Encompass Live shows and these are our archives. Most recent ones at the top. So today's show will be right there. When it's available, there'll be a link to the recording and a link to the slides. Um, we'll be base it off of the uh, session description that we use, which also has a link to census data, data.census.gov and the community survey and everything. So those are all built into the description as well, will be there. Um, you'll have be able to access to those. And while we're here, I'll show you, there is a search feature here for our show archive. So if you wanna look, see if there's a show that, that has been done on a topic you're interested in, you can search it. Um, you can search all of our archives or just the most recent, most recent 12 months, you want something just current. Uh, that is because this is the full archives of our show from the very beginning. I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because there's just too much, but as you can see, these dates are going back pretty far. Um, this has all of the archives for our show from the first, when we first premiered in January. January 2009. So 10, 11, 12 years worth of recordings are here. So just pay attention when you are watching an older show to the original broadcast date. The date will be on there. Um, many of our shows will stand the text test of time and still be useful and accurate, but some things become may become outdated. They may um, services or resources may have changed drastically since we first did the show uh, they may not exist anymore um, links may be different or broken um, but we are librarians this is one thing we do saving things for historical purposes so we'll always have them up here just pay attention to what if you do watch any of our shows um, we do also have a Facebook page. You can see I got links to it and I've got that over here. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like. You'll be reminded of when our shows are coming up. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. Um, information about our speakers, uh, letting you know when the recordings are available. So if you'd like to use Facebook. Otherwise, we also have a hashtag and comp live that we use on other social media, Twitter, um, Instagram, anywhere else. So you can follow us there or just, you know, keep an eye on our website. 
so that will wrap it up for today. I uh, hope you join us next week when we're doing our final part of the Teaching Technology in the Library series. Um, this has been a four-part series being done by Amanda Sweet, our Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And next week is part four, Marketing and Follow-up. Our three previous uh, sessions have been done. And the recordings are available for all of those. So if you want to watch those beforehand, it's not a requirement. They all kind of, they do all stand alone, but it is a set. Um, you can click on these links and go to those recordings of those three previous sessions um, and then sign up for next week's show or any of our other upcoming shows. We have we've got August all fully booked and I've got dates I'm working on for September, October. So keep an eye on this page from as they get filled in. So thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Blanca, for being here with us this morning. Thank and, you for having me. Yeah. Krista. I'm happy to have you. And if there's anything else, you know, as things develop and we get more data in there, maybe we'll have you come back again in a few months to give us an update. We'll see. Sounds great. Yeah. And hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye bye.